Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the personalized book recommendation video. If you guys have been seeing this trend on booktube so far, I've enjoyed a lot of my booktube friends just recommending books based on what their audience wants to see. So I asked on Instagram, um, I think a week ago, what type of book recommendations you wanted to see and I said be as specific and quirky as possible. Just send me all your book recommendations, what books you want to read or you're looking to read. And I chose some of those today, the ones that I had the best recommendations for. And and I'm gonna be showing them all today. I am back in New York in my childhood home so I have access to basically all of the books and I'm going to be just recommending them to you. So I have a huge stack in front of me so anyways let's get started. Okay so the first recommendation I got is a friends to lovers romance and I actually now that I think of it majority of the books that I read are actually with romances have been enemies to lovers so I didn't really have a lot for this but I would actually love to recommend my current read which is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I've actually read um, another book by Emily Henry and really enjoyed it and I also am really enjoying this one so I thought it'd be perfect to recommend. This one is a friends to lovers romance and I really like the way she crafts the friendship as the foundation for this romance rather than just go into the romance and then use the friendship as kind of like a backstory. But anyways I'm really enjoying this one and I think you will just love Emily Henry's writing. So the next recommendation that someone asked for is Feel Good Contemporary YA and I actually do have a few, I have two for this one. The first one is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. This one is definitely a feel good contemporary with a really good romance. This is adult. And then for a YA recommendation I have Stay Sweet by Siobhan Vivian. Siobhan Vivian's books are mostly contemporary and they are very much feel good YA contemporaries. I feel like feel good YA contemporaries to me mean like summer, books that takes place in the summer, books that kind of have that summery vibes, so I would definitely recommend Stay Sweet. Okay, someone else is looking for a feel-good contemporary with bisexual or queer rep in general. And so I'm recommending a few for this one. The first one I have is Noteworthy by Riley Redgate. This was one of my favorite books of all time and it follows a bisexual main character who is disguises herself as a guy to try out for this male acapella group after not being accepted into the female acapella group and she goes to kind of this like artsy music school. I highly recommend this one. I love this one so much. It's one my favorite books of all time and one that I keep recommending. This one it definitely helped me as a bisexual like accept my identity so I I love the rep in this. The next book that I have for this recommendation is The Brightsiders by Jen Wilde. Jen Wilde writes a ton of like LGBTQIA like YA lit. This one is following a bisexual rock star drummer in a hit band. I love the way she writes about fame. She writes these books with characters that are like famous or characters that are like musically involved and I think the rep in this is also really good. And then the last one I'm recommending is a little more adult. It is The Scape Gracers by Hannah, Hannah Abigail Clark. It's one I read this past year in the fall. It's a very much witchy book so it's very Halloween but it follows an outcast teenage lesbian witch and it's just it's just the happiest lesbian rep like you'll you'll read. It's just so fun and quirky and the main character is just so comfortable with who she is so I would highly recommend that. Someone else wanted a recommendation of something to read in one sitting, a slump relief basically. I am all about slump relief. I love books that will get me out of a slump um, and sometimes I just read them like meaninglessly. Like I don't, they don't have to be like diverse books. They don't have to be, you know, something. It's just to get me out of that reading slump. And for that I'm recommending another Emily Henry book, Be Treated by Emily Henry. This one got me out of a one month slump. I read this in one sitting on my plane ride, my two, my three hour plane ride. I finished this in one sitting. It was so good. So it's enemies to lovers so that's why I think it really keeps the fast paced feel but it also is a very summery book so contemporaries for me always get me out of slumps. And then the second book that I'm recommending is one that I read this past month and it is Dial A for Aunties by Jessie Q. Sutanto. This book is the most entertaining book I've ever read. I'm not even kidding and you will read it in one sitting because I read it in 3.5 hours and I wasn't even expecting to. I kind of just picked this up because it was a new release and um, it, I read it for API month and I kind of was just like what am I expecting from this? I have no idea. It's so over the top, so drama filled. This book follows our main character who accidentally kills her blind date and enlists the help of her, is it four? Her four aunties, Asian aunties, to help her hide the body and just chaos ensues. It's really wonderful and I highly recommend it. 
Someone wanted Latinx book recs. The one that I always recommend is really super underrated is The Victoria in My Head by Janelle Malanes, um, Milanes. This is kind of like the best of both worlds trope. It follows a Cuban girl who wants to be a rock star but, um, but on the other hand her parents expect her to be this like good student and expect her to live up to their idea of an American dream but our main character just wants to be a rock star and she kind of has to deal with this like generational gap, um, cultural gap and it's just an amazing read, has really great rep, and also I just love books about main characters wanting to be rock stars. Okay, someone was looking for a book with an unexpected ending, and for this one I'm recommending a few books here because I am a fan of unexpected endings. I love when books take me someplace else. I am also super bad at predicting the endings of books, so technically every book that I read could be unexpected because I'm just super bad at it, but the one that like really shook me to my core is Wilder Girls by Rory Power. This book is just, this book is just really weird. Um, I read it I think during the pandemic and this takes place during like a quarantine where this weird thing is happening outside the world and it takes place I think at this boarding school with girls who are in quarantine, who are quarantining away from the world, and it just has the most unexpected and weird ending. It's pretty graphic, it's kind of like gross a little bit, there's some like gross descriptions, but it's just so unexpected. I would highly recommend it if you're looking for just a fun read that's a little weird but also just very unexpected. And then the next two books that I have for this rec are both Taylor Jenkins Reid's books because her books like are just insane. You never know what you're gonna get with her books. And the one I have is Seven, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This one, super unexpected ending. And then the Daisy Jones and the Six. I would just go into these books just kind of like ready for like an enjoyable really well written book and the ending kind of just it's just super unexpected and I like highly I love Taylor Jenkins Reid so any of her books I will recommend. The next recommendation is a book that is really funny and makes you laugh out loud. Books, and then someone else wanted a book that legit makes you laugh out loud. For this, I'm recommending Heretics Anon Anonymous by Katie Henry. This is a book I haven't seen around really often, but it is hilarious. Like, not only is the cover just hilarious, because I tried to recreate this, like, charred bread and, like, tried to scratch out Heretics Anonymous, and it's, like, not possible, um, but also because it follows uh, our main character is atheist and he attends uh, he attends a Catholic school. So it's just it's a bunch of fun. Like it's totally unexpected. And I think that premise in itself is kind of like oh oh god, like you know what you're expecting. Um, so this book, and then I would like to do a plug for an upcoming book coming out on June first called Sunny Song Will Never Be Famous by Suzanne Park. If you're looking for a YA contemporary that is just like actually legit funny and not just like like cringe funny, I would highly recommend this book because some of the things that happens in this book is just like amazing. This book comes out June 1st. Um, I love Suzanne Park. I love this book. And this one follows our main character who's a social media influencer who gets sent to a digital deto detox farm camp. So I think that premise in itself just, it just stirs up the pot. It's super humorous, super funny, and our main character just has like a witty, like unfiltered personality. Ooh, I love this next one. Someone wanted a book, something with the vibe of a Marvel movie, but not a comic book. Um, I totally get you. I love Marvel movies, and whenever I read these books, I get the feeling. The first one we have is Want by Cindy Pond. This one takes place in a futuristic um, city that is kind of like polluted and ruled by like the richest people. Um, it's super, it gives me those Marvel vibes, kind of like... Guardians of the Galaxy a little bit because it's very futuristic and very spacey. Um, people are wearing these like suits. Um, and then the second one that I have here is War Cross by Marie Lu. Um, that one is super marvelly just because of like the characters and I feel like that you get the same sense of like the Marvel Avengers, the superheroes. So I would recommend those two. Okay, the next recommendation is someone that's looking for a book that feels like camping. I really love this one as well. The one I have recommended is The Geography of Lost Things by Jessica Brody. This one is a road trip book, and I feel like road trip books just remind me of camping. Um, just like the outdoor, the scenic routes, all of that good stuff, and the activities that are done. It's just very outdoorsy. And then the second one that I would recommend is a little on the creepier side, and it is Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. This one is a little bit more creepy. I think it invokes the camping kind of like eerie wood woodsy feeling. This one is definitely a lot creepier. It is like categorized as horror um, and it's YA and I would recommend this one. It's pretty big and it's pretty long but it definitely evokes those woodsy like natural feeling. 
the next recommendation is anything historical fiction by black or AAPI women. The one I have for one by a black author is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. One of my favorite books of all time. This book is so good. It takes place, um, it changes from the deep south to California in the 1950s, the 1990s. And then by an AAPI author I have These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, which is a 1920s um, Shanghai um, Asian inspired story, uh, Romeo and Juliet inspired as well. And this one I have not read yet. This is the only book in my book recommendations video that I have not read that I'm planning to read it this month. So I'm excited for it. Okay, so someone wanted a book with the best first line. And I, when I read this question, I kid you not, this book instantly came to mind because it has such an unforgettable first line that when I read this line to you, you will also not forget it and you will probably pick up the book. Um, <clears throat> so the first line of this book is... Chapter 1. There was a demon in McDonald's. And then the second sentence is, and it had a powerful hunger for Big Macs. And the book that I'm talking about is White Hot Kiss by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This cover is kind of eh, but this series is actually one of my favorite series of all time. Jennifer L. Armentrout used to be such just like, you know, comfort read author for me, and this series is no exception. It has like demons and romance, supernatural romance. I love hardcore. This one is so good. I just love her lines. Her lines are just so, so full of power and just so like, you know, like crazy, like just like in like out of nowhere sometimes. Um, but this first line definitely just took me by surprise, and I definitely think you'll you'll like this. I have a book that reminds you of home. Now this is going to change for everyone, but I home for me is New York City. So a book that reminds me of home is Yoke by Mary H. K. Choi. This one not only reminds me of home because the setting is in New York City, but the story itself is very personal to me. It talks about a main character with uterine cancer and having dealt with that in my family within my family. It always reminds me of home. It always brings me back to my family and makes me think of my family and family to me is home the people who I'm with um, so that book definitely reminds me of home I get really sappy when thinking about that book because that book in itself evokes all the feelings but I think even thinking about how it relates to my own life it just makes me more sappy the next book that someone wanted to read is a book with trans rep and yes I need to read more books with trans rep and I'm recommending a black Sun by Rebecca Rowan horse I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record for this book but if you have not read this book and you're looking for a book with trans rep or just an amazing fantasy book along the lines of like the fifth season by NK Jemisin, please read Black Sun. It is so so good. So 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 good and I can't stop recommending it. The next book that someone wanted to read is a book featuring food and I actually have a lot of recs for this. Um, specifically I like to read books about like Asian food, um, like Asian cultures, and a book that I'm recommending is that it just currently came out from my author friend Emiko Jean is Tokyo Ever After by Emiko Jean. It follows our main character who finds out that she is Japanese royalty in her high school, senior year of high school, and she goes to Japan in this book and explores all the food and the culture and it's just like it's just beautiful. The ambiance is beautiful. If you like reading about like Japanese food or food from different cultures, I would highly recommend this. It also teaches you some like things about etiquette as well, so like royal etiquette when eating and yeah, it's it's a really great book. Okay, someone wanted a recommendation with a book that makes you rethink life. I really love this one. I love reading books that make me rethink life. The first one I'm recommending for this is Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. This is a life-changing book. If you have not read this book yet, it is so short. This is also a one-sitting book, and it takes place over the course of 60 seconds as our main character is going down the floors of an elevator and it's stopping at like each floor and each floor evokes some type of memory or some type of he like in experiences this encounter with someone that in just he's the storytelling is amazing first of all Jason Reynolds is a genius I absolutely love everything that he writes um, but this book specifically is a book written in verse that takes place over 60 seconds that will re rethink that will make you rethink about your relative privilege it talks a lot about police brutality um, gun violence and it's just a very worldly book um, that is very timely now and also the writing narrative style of it will make you like rethink life you're like wow a lot can happen in 60 seconds and the next book that I'm recommending to this is one of my all-time favorite books of like all time and it is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. This follows our main character who goes to Taiwan to visit her maternal grandparents after her mom passes, after her mom commits suicide and passes. Um, so she's kind of forced to rethink her life without her parents and also kind of um, 
talk about mental health in a way that she wasn't very familiar with too in the beginning um and this book just always changes everything it changed my it changed my perspective about the stigmas of mental health in the asian community and my own family and it's a really lengthy book so be prepared to cry be prepared to shed some tears like just get emotional because this book will definitely change your life the next book that someone wanted is the classic enemies to lovers books that are not contemporary so i chose two fantasy books that you've probably already heard of but like I'm not going to stop recommending and it is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. This is classic enemies to lovers that literally like it's a seven book series and book four is currently out right now and it's just amazing to watch the enemies to lovers romance progress. It progresses like super slowly because it is a seven book series and it's not just resolved in the first book. This is like one of those fantasy series that are just done so well and it's enemies to lovers so perfect for that trope. Ah! Next one is The Wrath of the Dawn by Renee Audier. This one is a classic enemies to lovers that I love so much and it's a duology so if you're interested I would definitely recommend this. The next book that I have is someone wants to read a book that about cults and communes and this is actually one of I read pretty recently. I don't read many books about cults but I recently read The Project by Courtney Summers and the reason why I would recommend this book is because again I don't read much about cults so I don't know how cults are portrayed in the mainstream media and although I didn't it, think it didn't present anything really like new and like informational about cult I think the perspective at which a cult was like perceived in this book was really interesting because uh, our main character is kind of like writing this journalistic she has this journalistic perspective on this cult and so it's very much very journalistic very observational and from the inside of a cult and it shows you like the how people are manipulated and how, what people think when this stuff happens so I would recommend that book and finally the last recommendation that I have here is someone wants to read a philosophical book and philosophical to me also means like makes you rethink your life but just really makes you think it just really makes you like do that pose um and the book i'm recomm recommending is one of my all-time favorites and it is we are the ants by sean david hutchinson the premise of this is too unforgettable to even just like i cannot describe it to you any other way other than our main character gets abducted by aliens and the aliens tell him that he has a set number of days to decide whether or not he wants the world end so that the world's fate is in his hands they give him a giant button and they're like hey the world's gonna end in this many days but you have the chance to stop it just by clicking this button and it's his job as a character to assess if he wants the world to end or like if he doesn't want the world to end will he will he save the world basically if you had the power to save the world I really think it makes you think not only about humanity and our impact on the planet but also just like if you were grazed with that option like would you save the world like that's why it's philosophical because it makes you ask the same question as the as the main character but I would recommend this book okay so those are all the recommendations I have for this video thank you so much for submitting if you did and I'm sorry if I didn't feature yours here I still am looking through this dude through doing research for this tag actually I actually like looked up a bunch of books and now I have a bunch of books on my TBR featuring those kind of recommendations if you have any new recommendations please leave them in the comments and I might use them for my next personalized rec video but other than that thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you're not and I will see you in my next video.